Hey PAs, welcome to PA Gold Standard. Are you going into your internal medicine rotation or I'd even say family medicine and wondering uh, what you're gonna see or how you might uh, review or what things you need to look over to be better prepared? Uh, welcome to PA Gold Standard. My name is Michael Horde. I am a physician assistant student rounding out my last year, my clinical year of PA school. I just finished my internal medicine rotation and I'm gonna give you my top 12 diagnoses to review and know how to manage um, and also some other pointers uh, to go in there so you can be a rock star on your internal medicine rotation. And a quick side note, I have uh, upgraded from but a mere student. I am now the uh, proud owner of the laminated Pants Prep Pearl 2nd edition here so uh, now I'm not just a PA student or uh, I guess I'm officially a PA student that's kind of how you know you're getting serious when you laminate this thing so <laughs> anyways internal medicine uh, it deals with a lot of comorbidities I was in a clinical outpatient setting and like I said it's very similar into family medicine when you have walk-ins and you can and you also are managing patients but these patients come in and can have a list of like 20 diagnoses in addition to having all these comorbidities their periop uh, either um, before or after uh, an operation um, they could be seeing other subspecialties uh, and they could be requiring clearance from us uh, we could be seeing them just as their primary care um, and managing their chronic conditions as well as their acute conditions we can be seeing them as um, initial uh, we could be initially seeing them for a walk-in um, so very similar to family medicine but I would just say it's a little more uh, a little more intense they're a little more morbid um, or it can be so it wasn't my favorite rotation um, everybody's gonna have their their different opinions on it uh, me I'm, I'm uh, primary care is I like the medicine um, of it but I find myself um, wishing I was in uh, <laughs> wishing I was in the hospital to be honest <laughs> but that's just me so uh, one of the first things that I would make sure to know are your HEDIS measures these are monthly uh, biannual uh, measures that you're supposed to do to manage your patients um, every time they come in for either a follow-up or the six month of their yearly so these measures are uh, like knowing um, when your patient should be having a mammogram or a cervical cancer uh, pap smear or colonoscopy um, so you'll want to ask these questions whenever you initially uh, you know see the patient most of the time when you're managing these patients with chronic diseases you'll get blood work if it's say a six month follow-up um, not all the time but most of the time so you want to know those right off the bat CBC CMP lipids if they're um, diabetic you also want to get their uh, hemoglobin A1C he just also calls for microalbuminuria every three months uh, if it's uncontrolled or maybe every six months if it's controlled take a look at that you also want to ask about uh, their vaccination status especially if it's flu season um, and your other you know your other general questions but uh, those are those are kind of the main ones there now the fun stuff I'm gonna give you my top 12 diagnoses I'm not gonna go in crazy detail here I'm just gonna list them out probably somewhere up here um, and just something for you to review know how to manage because in internal medicine there's the comorbidities are a lot and the morbidity on those are can be pretty severe so you're gonna want to know how to what to look for how to manage them what kind of medications they uh, you need to prescribe or to adjust so number one hypertension so a lot of your patients are gonna have hypertension and also if you're in the setting like I was an outpatient clinic they can come in in a crisis and you're gonna to wanna to know how to manage that whether they need to be um, given their blood pressure medication or sent to the hospital number two hyperlipidemia number three COPD and this is in telling uh, bronchitis as well as emphysema um, you're going to want to know the management for for both whether they need a step up or step down whether they need to add on um, steroids or not you also want to know how to manage that acutely if they're having an exacerbation uh, number four asthma 
Number five, GERD. Number six, hernias. And I could have combined this with GERD, but um, in, in internal medicine, a lot of your patients have had surgery, so they are susceptible to uh, post-op complication, adhesions, um, hernias in specific types of, uh, well, hernias, and, and that can lead to GERD for specific types. Um, number eight, fibromyalgia. Number nine, diabetes, diabetes one and diabetes two. Number 10, thyroid disorders. You won't, always, you won't see a whole lot of thyroid disorders, but there can be times when uh, you have mood fluctuations or palpitations or hot flashes that you're gonna want to uh, check for thyroid disorders. So you wanna um, order labs and you also need to, know, need to know how to manage that hypo hyperthyroidism. Number 11, chronic kidney disease and dialysis patients. You're gonna be uh, prescribing a lot of medication and managing a lot of medication. So um, when you're ordering these CMPs, you're checking their creatinine, their BUN. Um, you're checking to make sure their renal function, their GFR is adequate. Uh, a lot of patients is gonna be low, so um, maybe even look over uh, the normal um, versus abnormal for your uh, kidney disease uh, classifications. Number 12, anemia. Couldn't see it there. Um, so obviously you'll be getting a lot of anemia, a lot of malnutrition, or even um, uh, 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 inadequate absorption. Um, your anemia of chronic disease, know how to see that on a CBC, or know how to diagnose that from a CBC. Um, a B12 and folate deficiency. Um, uh, your thalassemia, so hematology can get in there, but you want to know how to, how to measure anemia. Those are my 12 uh, chronic diseases. Look over those um, going into your internal medicine rotation. If you know these and you know these managements and also your HEDIS measures, you're gonna be managing uh, those patients in a clinical, outset, clinical outpatient setting. Um, you're gonna be looking like a rock star going in there and knowing that. I wish I'd have known that going in. So if you're wondering how to study for your PAEA exam, um, your end of rotation exam, check out my video on how to study for end of rotations. I will be covering that there. So like this video if this helped you at all or please leave a comment and let me know what you thought. Um, feel free to email me also. I think my email is down in the link.